unless you recently awakened from a coma or have recently returned from space travel, you know what season we are in. If you don't, I'll give you some hints. Last Thursday was Thanksgiving and Friday was Black Friday, the day upon which Santa arrived at Apalachicola and stepped off a shrimp boat onto the dock. The signs are all around us and are unmistakable. Tis the season. Call it Christmas if you're politically incorrect. Call it the holiday season if you are socially aware. Call it winter festival. That seems to satisfy no one, so that's probably the best way to go. Whatever you call it, there is no doubt that the culture is pointed toward that annual orgy of consumption, guilt, sentiment, and nostalgia, which the culture calls Christmas. But what about you and me? What, what about us Christians? Where and to whom are we pointed? It's no use complaining about the commercialization of our holy day. We lost that battle long ago. Slogans like, keep Christ in Christmas, sound to the rest of the world like we are the direct descendants of Ebenezer Scrooge. The powers and principalities have pretty much staked out Christmas for themselves, and no amount of our complaining and whining as churchgoers will change that. So, I have a suggestion. Let the culture have its Christmas. Let Santa step off the shrimp boat and eat, oh, a dozen oysters on the half shell. Let the ballet productions of the Nutcracker proceed apace. Most of this has nothing to do with the gospel, and a lot of it is a lot of fun, so let's just let the culture have its Christmas. That leaves Advent for you and me. And that's a very different season. Advent is not about waiting for Christmas. It's about waiting for Christ. And that is a very different kettle of fish. Advent begins in all places with the cry of the prophet Isaiah five centuries before the birth of Jesus. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, the prophet cries. Isaiah has good reason to lament. Jerusalem lies in ruins. The people of Israel are scattered to the four winds. The highest and best of their society has been put in chains and hauled off to slavery in Babylon. And what has happened to God, the prophet wants to know. What has happened to the God who, who makes the nations tremble? The God who causes earthquakes that make mountains shake? What has happened to the God who declared God's steadfast love for God's people Israel? We're fading like a leaf, the prophet cries, and God bears part of the blame. God is punishing us with his absence and that is making us worse. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. If you do a better job of being God, the prophet says, we do a better job of being your people. In the popular vernacular, he is saying, because you were not there for us, we have not been there for you. That sounds like self-justification to me, but the point is Advent begins with a very frank conversation between us and God. Where are you? And why don't you do something about the mess we're in? 
Why didn't you stop us from invading countries on the other side of the world with no clear notion of what we were doing? And now that we are in, there seems no good way to get out. Why didn't you tell us that our passion for guns would overshadow our compassion for the mentally ill? Why didn't you have us listen to those scientists who for decades have been telling us if we keep dumping carbon into the atmosphere, we're going to harm the planet? Because you hid yourself, therefore we transgressed. I'm, sure not, I'm not sure that argument holds water, but it does have the virtue of being frank. Ancient Israel learned the hard way that they could not possess God. Their call to serve God did not grant them control over God. If God seems to be hiding from us, perhaps that's because we are looking in the wrong place. We're looking for the God of miraculous intervention. The God who tears open the heavens the God of armies and of earthquakes. Suppose, just suppose that God is present, but not in the way that we expect. Suppose God's absence is in fact a call to discern God's presence. Dietrich Bonhoeffer in 1944 writing from his prison cell said this, God would have us know that we must live as people who manage our lives without God. The God who is with us is the God who forsakes us. The God who lets us live in the world without the working hypothesis of God is the God before whom we stand continuously. Before God and with God, we live without God. God lets himself be pushed out of the world to the cross. He is weak and powerless in the world, and that is precisely the way, the only way, he is with us and helps us. Not long after he wrote these words, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was executed. His life bore witness to the God who rent the heavens and came down, but not with coercive, irresistible power, but with vulnerable, suffering love. The God of the cross and the resurrection, not the God of the Third Reich. When God comes with armies and powers, armies of angels, someone gets hurt. When God comes with suffering love, God gets hurt. And people are made whole. After his rant about God's absence, Isaiah seems to draw a deep breath to compose himself. And then he addresses God not this time out of anger, but with a longing for a restored relationship. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are the work of your hand. I suspect that most of us cannot hear these words from this ancient prophet of Israel without recalling our own family prayer our Father. And those of us of a certain age will also recall a hymn embedded in childhood memory. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. I am the potter, you are the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting, yielded and still. While I am waiting. Advent is a time for waiting, not for Christmas, but for Christ, the child who rent the heavens in the silence of the night. 
the God hidden in human form, whose power is revealed in the surrender of power. We wait for the God who is our Father, eternally, patiently, gently molding us into a new creation. The irony of, of Advent is that it is both already and not yet. Already God is with us in Christ Jesus, and yet the kingdom he inaugurated is not yet fully arrived. Already Christ has come, and yet Christ is to come. Meanwhile, we wait. But not as those abandoned by a faithless God, but those who are being shaped and molded by the hidden God. We wait with hearts broken and with hearts being made whole, with eyes open to God's presence in a broken world, and with hands ready to work for the healing of the world. This is Advent. Let us forego Christmas for as long as possible in order to make ready for the Christ who has come and the Christ who shall come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.